It's Saturday, January 30th, and you're watching The Great Lost Rewatch. Today we're watching the season five finale, The Incident. This is a Jacob-centric episode. Oh my god, we finally get to meet Jacob. He sits down on the beach and cooks himself up fish. He is wearing a white shirt and then a man in a black shirt comes. Mind if I join you? Please. There's a ship coming to the island which looks suspiciously like the Black Rock. They have a discussion on their differing opinions about humanity. It always ends the same. It only ends once. Anything that happens before that, it's just progress. And then the man in black turns to him and says, Do you have any idea how badly I want to kill you? Yes. One of these days, sooner or later, we're going to find a loophole, my friend. Obviously, a lot of questions still. Who is this man in black? Why does he want to kill Jacob so badly? Why can't he kill Jacob if he feels like it? First flashback that we get is Kate. She steals a new kids on the block lunchbox that she eventually will build the time capsule in with her friend Tom. She gets caught stealing the lunchbox. Jacob says, um, no, I'll buy them the lunchbox. Next flashback is Sawyer as a little kid at his parents' funeral. Starting to write the note to Mr. Sawyer, when his pen dies, Jacob comes up and gives him a pen. Next is Saeed. This takes place after the Oceanic Six are rescued. Jacob asks Saeed for directions. Nadia walks out into the street and gets hit by a car and dies. Next is Alana, who is somewhere where they speak Russian, presumably Russia, but who knows. She's not looking so good. She seems to have a certain condition. She agrees to help Jacob. With what? Mm -hmm. We see Jacob sitting on a park bench. Now we know why Locke survived falling out of an eight-story building. He apologizes for horrible things happening to him. Then is Sun and Jin's wedding. Jacob comes up and tells them what a blessing true love is. Then is Jack, who is performing the surgery where he accidentally cuts the epidural sac. I think. I'm not really medically inclined. But it's the story that he told Kate on the first episode in the pilot about stitching up and counting to five. It turns out that Jack's dad kind of forced him to take a time out and count to five, and Jack considered it to be really embarrassing. That's such an awesome father-son relationship. Jacob shows up and is able to dislodge the Apollo bar. The next flashback is Juliet's when she's a little kid and her parents are announcing that they're getting a divorce. Sometimes two people who really love each other just aren't meant to be together. Hmm. Foreshadowing? To be noted is the fact that this is the only flashback where Jacob does not make an appearance. The next flashback is Hurley's as he's getting released from jail and he catches a cab ride with Jacob. I want to know why you won't go back to the island. Because I'm cursed? What if you weren't cursed? What if you were blessed? Hurley says you forgot your guitar and he says it's not my guitar, but show up at Ajira Flight 316 in 24 hours to get back to the island. Whenever Jacob makes an appearance to one of our losties, he always touches them in some way. That is critically important. Back in 1977, Jack and Saeed dismantled the bomb. I dream a dream where a lost finale is not hinged upon blowing something up. Season one, we were trying to blow up the hatch. In season two, we were trying to blow up the door in the Swan Station. In season three, we were trying to blow up the others. In season four, we were trying to blow up the boat. And in season five, we had a flippin' hydrogen bomb. In 2007, Locke is leading his people towards Jacob. Sun asks Ben about who this Jacob guy is, and Ben says, everybody answers to somebody, and that is Jacob. He's the guy in charge. And Sun asks him, what is he like? And Ben says, I don't know. I've never met the man. Richard questioning Locke about being dead, but now being alive. is a little confused by that, as are we all. And Locke says, well, I would think it's not possible for someone to not age. Yet here you are, Richard, not aging. And Richard says, I'm this way because of Jacob. Alana mentions to Brom that she thinks that Frank might be a candidate. Frank asks what's in the box. What's in the box? Frank doesn't like what's in that crate. Back in 1977 on the submarine, Kay is trying to convince Sawyer and Juliet to go back to the island to stop Jack. Sawyer just makes this big speech about how he's not gonna do it when Juliet says we've gotta do it and she knocks out the guy that's about to give them their sedative. Back in 2007, Ben tells Locke that, you know, the smoke monster appeared in the form of my daughter and threatened to hurt me if I didn't follow your every order. And Locke's like, great, that means I won't have to try and convince you. And Ben's like, convince me to do what? And Locke says, well, you're gonna kill Jacob. Jack and Saeed get their Dharma jumpsuits on and are gonna just walk straight out of Dharmaville. Then fortunately, Roger Linus spots them and then Saeed gets shot in the stomach. That's smart. 
Walmart shoot a guy carrying a bomb on his back. Fortunately, Jin, Hurley, and Miles come with the Dharma van to rescue them. Kate and Juliet and Sawyer make it back to the island, and when they find Vincent running up on the beach. And who is Vincent with but Rose and Bernard? Rose and Bernard are retired. They've built a little house by the sea, and they are completely happy. Back in 2007 with Alana, Bram, and Frank. Make it to the cabin where they find that the ash circle around the cabin has been broken. Alana says that the cabin hasn't been used by Jacob in a long time, but she knows where he went and she shows him a picture of the full statue. Back with Locke and his group still walking towards Jacob, we make it back to our original camp, good old times. Sun finds Charlie's drive shaft ring. I wonder why they bring up the drive shaft ring. I think it's also to kind of bring up, don't forget about Charlie. Ben admits to Locke that the first time he took him to Jacob's cabin, he was just as surprised as Locke was that something happened. Jack and company get stopped by Sawyer and company on their way to the Swan site. Jack starts to talk about destiny again and Sawyer's like, I don't speak destiny. I know that you're here because you want something. What do you want, Jack? Jack admits that he screwed things up with Kate and he wants to make things right and that if they were meant to be, then they were meant to be. Sawyer says, are you sure I can't talk you out of this? And Jack's like, no. How the hell you think you are? We have been waiting for five seasons for Jack and Sawyer to just go at it with fisticuffs. Juliet breaks it up, says Sawyer has to help Jack because it's the right thing to do. Sawyer's like, are you crazy, lady? No, not quite like that. He's just, I deserve to know why you've changed your mind. And she says, I changed my mind when you looked at Kate. We make it to the Swan site where they are drilling and Pierre Chang is saying, the readings are dangerous, we have to stop. And Rosinski is just being a total lunatic saying, no, drill. Back in 2007, Locke and our group have reached to where Jacob lives. Locke says, that's a nice foot, but what does it have to do with Jacob? Locke tries to bring Ben with him. He says, there can only be one leader at a time and only the leader can see Jacob and Locke says, I think you're making these rules up as you go. I don't know if that was intentionally done because the writers are always accused of making things up as they go along, but I choose to believe that was a little shout out from them. Back in 1977, Saeed has the plutonium core of Jughead ready to go. Jack finds out that they're actually at the Swan site pretty much, so he gets that hydrogen bomb on his back. Miles says, can I ask you guys a question? Have none of you thought about the idea that maybe what Jack is doing is the incident? Did our people prevent the incident from happening or were they themselves the incident? So Jack makes it to the Swan site Unfortunately, Phil sees him and a gunfight breaks out. The Dharma bus cavalry arrives and they try to shut off the drill, but they've hit the pocket of electromagnetic energy. Jack drops the bomb. Nothing happens. All of the metal in the area is sucked towards the center of the construction site. Unfortunately, one of the things it pulls is this magnetic chain that hooks around Juliet, pulling her down as well. She says, I'm sorry, I love you, I love you. And then she falls. Back in 2007, Ilana and her group meet up with Richard and his group. Actually, it's not Richard, it's Ricardus. What lies in the shadow of the statue? And, he, and Ricardus replies in Latin, the one who will protect slash save us all. Ilana shows him what she has in the crate. <laughs> So for the second finale in a row, we have a secret thing in a box that we don't know what it is, and the answer is the same. It's John Locke. The son's like, um, if that's John Locke, who is that guy? Speaking of that guy, he and Ben get to the same room that we saw at the beginning of this episode. Jacob talks to the fake Locke saying, well, you found your loophole. Ben has this big long soliloquy, you never deemed me worthy of meeting you. What about me? What about you? <laughs> Jacob dies but not before he says, they're coming. What does that mean? We go back to 1977. And we see Julia wake up at the bottom of the hole. She looks over and she can see the hydrogen bomb. And she takes a rock and she starts to hit it. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> That's where we're gonna leave it, fading to white. We'll be back with a few more things before the premiere. On Tuesday, I can't talk about it without getting really excited and talking super fast, so I'm gonna end this video now. Okay, bye. We're gonna need to watch that again. Why didn't you love me? You were supposed to love me and uh, not really. Look, there's the polar bear. I didn't forget about it this time. Everything's reversed when you look at it in the computer.